So if you're getting all caught up on your Looney Tunes holiday specials, naturally you'll end up going on a Thanksgiving diet. But before then, you'll binge out on a hell of a lot of candy with Bugs Bunny's Halloween special. This Halloween TV special premiered on CBS on October 26th of 1977. It'll prepare you for the night's all-new episode of the slacker sitcom Busting Loose. No, not the one based on the Richard Pryor movie. The one about, uh, you know what, just watch the Richard Pryor movie. Much like Bugs Bunny's Thanksgiving Diet, the Halloween special is a collection of shorts strung together with new footage to assemble an overarching plot, much of it having to do with Bugs facing off against Witch Hazel. The new footage was directed by Dave DeTeej, a writer on The Pink Panther and Mr. Magoo, and in 79 he'd also direct Thanksgiving Diet. The opening montage already has me sold because it's showing me that it'll contain two of my favorites, Claws for Alarm and Transylvania 65000, complete with narration. When the moon is full and the banshees wail. Yes, yes, and I also won't forget about the big giveaway at nine. Briefly, we see part of a haunting we will go where Daffy had his own Sylvester Jr. and Clyde Bunny. Since this is a 1966 cartoon, it already kinda sorta has a Hanna-Barbera cartoon feel to it. You can always tell when a Warner Brothers cartoon will open with this version of the theme. We go back a little further to 1956 with Broomstick Bunny to bring bugs into it, but the most obvious way you can tell it's old footage versus new footage is when Bugs' voice starts to turn into the much lower chain-smoking Bugs Bunny Dak. My delicate inner sense of danger warns me that there's something faintly unhealthy in the atmosphere of this cottage. Don't you want your tea? Me, I like my doctor's tea. Bugs' bag of candy is two cartons of cigarettes. With the new footage, Bugs says that he only likes tea from his own doctor, and then he goes off to bring Witch Hazel his doctor's special tea. That's the plot. Anyway, now we're in Hyde and Hare, where Bugs' doctor is none other than Dr. Jekyll. Since this is apparently all taking place during Halloween, Bugs could just assume this is a trick-or-treater. Oh my, I hope I didn't hurt anyone. Huh, I think he's creepier as Dr. Jekyll than he is as Mr. Hyde. So far, the combining of older cartoons is done fairly well, as this goes seamlessly into Hide and Go Tweet, which already began with Sylvester asleep outside Dr. Jekyll's window. This is a fairly busy building, considering if you saw Quackbusters, this is the same building as Daffy's office. I'm fine with them including this cartoon. I'm not the biggest Tweety fan in the world, but I like Hide and Go Tweet. All they had to do to make Tweety funny to me was turn him into some gigantic, hideous beast. And Sylvester's reaction to him is still hilarious to this day. <laughs> Hell, sometimes it's legit kind of freaky. I gotta admit, I'd shit my pants if I saw that coming towards me. I love that despite this, he still wants to eat him. Though I'm sure that would give him terrible food poisoning. Like in the original, it ends with it being a dream, and they gotta end this so they can get back to the main plot, I guess. Hmm, I wonder if this stuff really does have pizzazz. Oh right, Bugs needs tea that has pizzazz. This plot is going off the rails. So back to Hide and Hair, where the common theme this Halloween special is green. They gotta get in new footage of him being zapped by Witch Hazel. That way he can wake up passed out in a witch's tangled hair. What's up, Zaza? Zaza? Timeless. Oh, Bugs, you silly hare. You should know at this point she's gonna eat you. He's gotta get out of there by jumping into 1977. Oh, broomsticks. You can easily tell when it's new footage when he starts to look like a refrigerator drawing of himself. This is an eventful Halloween. Moments ago we were trick-or-treating and now we're in a castle. <laughs> oh yeah? Well... <laughs> I know, right? I'm going crazy following this too. It's good that this special takes a commercial break, so we can forget that in the old footage, Witch Hazel is green, and in the new footage, she's some kind of corpse color. 
Some of these shorts I haven't seen in a while, so it's here to remind me that, oh yeah, there was once an episode that featured Daffy Duck, Witch Hazel, and Speedy Gonzales. As the opening suggests, yes, we do get Scaredy Cat and Claws for Alarm, where Witch Hazel decides to turn her house into a hotel, which Porky and Sylvester stay at. I'm all for this, because Claws for Alarm is by far one of my favorites that features either Porky or Sylvester. I love these mice screwing with these two, especially scenes like this. <laughs> So much better than Haunting of Bly Manor. These are great cartoons that show Sylvester's cowardice turned into complete frustration at being the only one who sees this. And given that Claws for Alarm and Scaredy Cat roughly have the same plot, they combine pretty easily. But don't forget, Bugs and Hazel are nearby. Uh, say, you witchy, with all your talent, we could make this a night to remember. Oh yeah, they're all in the same location. I guess they're friends now who have drank that tea with pizzazz that Bugs was looking for. But the most mind-blowing twist is that the formula turned Witch Hazel into Count Blood Count from Transylvania 65000. Or at least when that cartoon officially starts. Well, what do you know? The Witch's Library. Magic words and phrases. Sounds interesting. Yeah, it made the original audio come into play. Okay, even though in the original, Bugs did briefly turn him into Witch Hazel, I can't get over that they actually are the same person here, with the dubbed audio there to remind you that, yes, she's still here. <laughs> wonder where the old hag went. No, no, forget that part. What you want to see is where they straight up dub her voice over Count Blood Counts. Hocus, hocus, now I crush you. Emma Cadabra. Yeah, that's weird, but considering they cut out the setup of the umpire joke, in this version, he just appears as an umpire for no reason. Naturally, they cut out when they say Count Blood Count's name, but they do keep it in where Bugs turns him into Witch Hazel with added animation. Newport News. Okay, Rabbit, you spell your last... Oh my, <laughs> seamless. From the beginning, it makes sense that this would all be leading to Bewitched Bunny, which has the most memorable ending of the Witch Hazel cartoons, and one of the most quotable lines. <laughs> ah, sure, I know. But aren't they all witches inside? Oh, but that's not what they do here. Sure, uh, I know, but after all, who wants to be alone on Halloween? Those of us who want to watch Bugs Bunny's Halloween special, of course. It doesn't end there. We've got a stinger, too. Happy Halloween, dearie. Same to you. Okay, cut that out. It looks like I'm watching Looney Tunes through the vision of a gigantic sugar rush. And if you aren't going to get nightmares yet, Bugs' ending smile should do the trick. Mmm, need salt. Yeah, great. I'm going to go throw up a dozen Almond Joys now. So, of course, your best bet is just simply watching a collection of these cartoons on their own. But part of the appeal of watching a special like this is to see how they combine them into a very loose plot. And there's unintentional hilarity with the difference in voice and animation quality. But my biggest disappointment is that, yes, it did include the ending of Bewitched Bunny, but not my favorite part where Prince Charming comes in to wake up Bugs Bunny. It contributes to the running gag of characters being perplexed by the name Hansel. And I don't know why, but it's one of my favorite Looney Tunes gag. I can't explain it. It just gets me every time. So I'll leave with that clip. This here's the story of Hansel and Gretel. Hansel? 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 Hansel?